happy today. Uh, I am William Brown from WilliamBrown.com. Uh, um, I um, want to welcome you to uh, Disconnect to Connect, One Word Conversations. And um, today, we're going to talk about normal. That's, <laughs> that's, that's going to be fun, actually, because um, during this time, um, normal or things not being normal has been showing up a lot. And so really seeing what that means to me and seeing how that's showing up for a lot of different people um, is going to be interesting. So as I do, I invite um, one of my friends to come in so we can just have a conversation. So if I can hit the right buttons here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I am doing great. Now, now, Chris, I would love for you to introduce yourself however you would like so everyone can get to know you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for inviting me, and um, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm Chris Scrat with Organizing Maniacs, and I own a professional organizing business outside of Washington, D.C., and we specialize in working with uh, clients that have um, brain-based challenges, so the majority of our clients have ADD, ADHD, OCD, and hoarding tendencies. And recently somebody said, like, oh, you are the person that organizes things. And I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, that's so not what I do. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm like a person that kind of help people do the things that they really love to do and still accomplish all of the things that they want to accomplish. So. Wow. Well, well, that's great. Well, so the question, you know, of the day, how is normal showing up for you? <laughs> ah, okay, well, before we get there, I have to say that I begrudge the word normal a little bit whenever I, whenever <laughs> I saw, like, everybody had been assigned really cool words, and I was like, why do I get normal? I hate that. <laughs> uh, so over, I feel like over the last couple of weeks, I've been like, okay, uh, what does normal really mean? And uh, what is it like to be normal? And uh, what are some of the definitions of normal for myself? Um, I saw Jeff Harris's interview and he looked up his word boredom, which I was like, right. that was such a good word. And I was so appropriate for him because he plays for a living. And I was like, normal, right. that's a tough word. Um, and I have been, I've given this a lot of thought, actually. And I think like, there is no such a thing as normal. <laughs> I feel like, okay. I feel like the whole concept of normal is, is like an illusion, right? Because every day, every day I wake up and I may have certain routines and I may do certain things that are like, habitual and then they make me feel safe and secure and they right. make me feel like my life makes sense but even those things are not really normal and they are not guaranteed you know lately right. i've been um i've been giving a lot of thought to like um to last times you know mm. like yeah, it's 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 something for me, and I and I and I appreciate that, and I think I've landed that um, that there for myself. Mm -hmm. Normal has shown up for me as um, what something that I consistently accept mm -hmm. or, or do, yeah. a reality that I consistently accept, and that's that's what my normal is. Yeah. Okay. And so, and that is, and so, and that has been hard for me because. You know, I've called myself a change agent or always mm -hmm. kind of look and not kind of get stuck in something and looking for the next. Um, and so it's like, OK, just be OK with what's present, what's, mm -hmm. you, you know, what's going on right now. Um, and and so I've like I said, I've ne I've never been there, but feeling that I should be. There's like yeah. a judgment. There's a shame, you mm -hmm. know, that I, you know, okay, be normal, right? You, mm -hmm. know, be, you know, and just kind of, you know, you know, don't be odd, don't be different, don't be all the other things, so people can relate to me better. You know, mm -hmm. do you have those type of um, internal dialogue or anything? 
Um, interesting that you asked me that question because I don't have a be normal dialogue, but I have a be responsible dialogue, which is which is my version of being normal for you. Right. Because I feel like I am like I'm a person that like you know I am reliable. I do things when I say I'm going to do, or at least strive to. I I show up right. in a certain way. My friends, I believe the story I tell myself is that my friends have an expectation, and so does my family, and so do my clients. So I have this like story that I tell myself that I have to be something constantly because it's what people expect right. of me. And it is my version of right. like, you know, being normal, which I think sometimes right. it doesn't go with who I really am, right? Because right. I, I, am, I, I am responsible, but I can also be irresponsible. <laughs> Right, absolutely. You know, I am my label and I'm not my label. Right? Yeah, no, I love that. I'm like, you know, literally. At, at, you know, at the, at the same time, and it's, and it's trying to, I think where the suffering or where the challenges are that come in our life is when we are doing something for an extended period of time and then we're not. And it's like, uh-oh, mm. I guess I'm not that anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? And, and it's like, no, I'm still that, but I'm just not that right now. And, yeah. you know, and, and that's okay. And I think when we look at the, the p pandemic and pandemic and I don't know, I didn't come out. I haven't, I haven't said that much, but when we look at what's going on in, in our economy and in our lives right now, there is this rush to get back to normal or to get mm -hmm. back to something familiar at least. And, and I don't, you know, I, I can see that, but there is, um, there is something within me that wants to embrace what's coming or what, um, you know, how I'm going to show up, you know, being at home more or how mm -hmm. am I going to show up not shaking hands or giving hugs, mm -hmm. you, know, um, yeah. you, you know, all that. Kind what's of stuff. the I'm new normal going to look like, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And so, and not just long for this past normal, mm -hmm. but norm, what's, what's normal, what the reality that I accept now mm -hmm. and, and type of thing. And, and, and I, and I think until we as a society or, or the a world kind of just, I guess, embrace that there's a lot of things that are going to have that, that are going to change. Mm -hmm. um, around our health and the way and and how we work, um, and it's and it's not good or bad, but it's just you know it's just a, a reality that we have to face. And I'm, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm still kind of working that out for myself. Um, how you know how is your day? You know the, the yeah. day in the life of Chris. You know, <laughs> it's that, yeah. You know, yeah. No, I I love what you what you just said because I feel like. Uh, figuring out a new normal is going to be, it is going to be challenging for a lot of us in the context of like, not even who we are, it's just like, how do we operate in the world? You know, um, I was reading an, an article about, um, and I was having a conversation with a friend about that too. It's like, like when I go to the grocery store and I'm wearing a mask, I feel like I, I don't do, I don't have small talk with people. I don't, you know, they are not looking me in the eye. We're like having weird interactions. And mind you that I'm sure we're right. trying to like do social distancing, but it's like there is this disconnection that's happening at the grocery store that I didn't notice right. before. And that's because we have this stigma of what it means to wear a mask, right? And the right. truth is, is that so, we're probably going to be doing that for the next year until they really figure out where is a vaccine or how, how do we really contain the virus spread uh, in a different way that doesn't include wearing a mask. So masks are going to be our new normal and how do we operate in a social way and still interact with people like we used to without feeling like this disconnection. So I love that. Um, that's one thing that's come up for me a lot lately is like, what does it feel like to just go out in the world and just wear a mask? And I feel embarrassed by, by it. I think like in the beginning, I just had this like weird feeling like, my mask on. Look, yeah, I was like, right. maybe people won't see me, but it's like, seriously, like we're all trying to protect each other, and that's okay. Like that is the new normal, 
And I'm okay with that. If you're okay with that, right. we're just gonna all be in this together, right? Right. And it's it is it is something that, you know, I've noticed that when I when I would go to the park, you know, or something, or just like I said, be out in public. And now I'm like taking count, you know, a count of how many people are around me or uh -huh. how close they are around me. And, uh -huh. and it's like, those are the things that I just wasn't aware. You know, uh -huh. I noticed there were people there, but I wasn't, you know, how close are you really? You know, you could, you could tell when they, you know, it's like, okay, you're in my personal space, but before, <laughs> my personal space, you know, what's a lot closer. Than yeah, yeah. No, this, is, like this is gonna really, <laughs> this is gonna really, this is gonna really suck for like the close talker people or the people that really <laughs> like to like be, you know, really close to people because we're gonna be like, back up, buddy. We need six feet of space right. here. Right, we have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, or what, what, what did you say? Yeah. You know, what, you know, I don't have time for this uh, yeah. and, and everything. I think the the other thing that um, that came up for me with with normal and and this conversation with you is, you know, order or you know organization. Mm -hmm. And it's like for for me, I, you know, I would say my life needs to be in order. There has to be this, you know, this this is what normal is. Chaos is not norm, normal, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know. So I I need to clean this. I need to you know, put this way, you know, if there that type of order in my life dictates my judgment on 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 normal or what's acceptable mm -hmm. uh, and everything. And and I just you, you know, I, I recognize just doing this show that um, I have been productive and, and you know and, and committed to do this on a, a daily basis and my desk isn't as clean as I would like it to be mm, yeah and you know but you know and I said before well I, I really can't get anything done on a consistent basis without a clean desk and I says well I guess I can right <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know I just kind of move things over to the side and just kind of um to, to have it happen yeah so is you know is this um you know to connect those dots to our to our conversation is this moving our thoughts or moving our judgments over to the side and says, I'm just going to deal with this. You know? yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that's, just going to just show up. <laughs> that's really interesting that you're, uh, my sister and I did a Q&A with like organizing maniacs um, clients on Friday. And like we started off the conversation by saying that people think that just because we're working from home, and that we don't have anywhere to go, that we have an abundance of time. And I personally have found that I don't. Like my time is getting consumed doing other things. And mind you that I haven't watched any TV. I haven't watched the news. I haven't read any books. And my time is still filled with other things. And I'm, I'm like looking around trying to figure out like, what am I doing? I'm connecting with a lot of people and I'm working and I'm doing a lot of things. So. I, ha I haven't had any time to like really span organizing, cleaning, doing projects, doing things like that. So I feel like that's one misconception about it. The second thing is, at least for me, whenever the world feels a little uncertain outside my door, I retreat inside and then I try to figure out what can I do to create some sort of non-chaotic space for myself. And my go-to is the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I you know whenever I what's going on whenever I have organized my refrigerator way too many times, I know that I should like call someone and have a conversation about it. You know, so my girlfriends like I kind of make fun of me. They were like, "How many times have you organized your refrigerator lately?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I really haven't organized my refrigerator that much either." But I sense that in my clients, what I see a lot is like whenever people feel unsettled. Uh, you know, organization is a thing that we feel like we default to and then we go to because it's soothing. It's like, you know, right. there's you creating you're creating order, you're making labels, you're getting rid of things that, you know, for, you know, to just quote Marie Kondo, it doesn't spark joy. It doesn't have any place in your home. Then you can get rid of that. And organization just has this like way of making us feel centered and at peace. If that's your thing and if your brain wiring kind of goes with that, right? Otherwise, there's a whole other level of like self-judgment 
and chaos that comes from it. Cause you know, there's a lot of my, there's a lot of my clients that an organization doesn't come naturally for them. So then they're spinning and churning and, and just kind of trying to uh, figure out why am I not like those people? Why can't I be right. organized why like normal, you? Right? Why am I not normal? Right. Uh, so right. I think one thing that I try to normalize for people a lot is that organization is not, uh, is not, you know, natural to everybody's brains. I mean, like we all have talents and mine is right. definitely organizing, but some of my clients, I mean, they're brilliant people. They're doing amazing things in the world, but organization <laughs> is not their unique talent, right? And that's okay. Right. It is it's something I just got a, a signal from my, uh, fr from my uh, phone uh, camera. Oh. And so it's like got a battery that I, that I didn't yeah. do, but battery there. It's like, and that's, and that's, and that's normal. That's right? normal. You know, we're battery die. We're, 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 we're always concerned about um, our battery, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like, I missed the wrong business to, 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 to be, and I should be in the battery business. Every, yeah, right. You know, I know this morning, all, I this know. morning I looked outside and I was like, oh, there's a big storm coming. I hope we don't lose power because can't get in there now when you don't have power. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's something that this, you know, this time at home or this time, you know, not, you know, out, you know, and, 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 and public would be totally different without, you know, the, the internet or power mm, and all that other kind yeah. of stuff. It's like I mean, how with the, you know, how if with this, that. if this had happened, like, um, if this had happened, you know, like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we would be we would be having a well we wouldn't be having this conversation but we would all be having a much different conversation about like what normal is right and i think like one benefit one benefit of technology is that a lot of people's lives have shifted a little bit where they're working from home or you know they're teaching from home or they're you know doing all kinds of things from home but their lives hasn't changed substantially. Like there's a lot of people that right. still have jobs. There are people that are still able to have businesses and do all kinds of things remotely that technology has provided us with. And that made that normal, right? Which, which I love like the concept of what, like what is our lives, what are our lives going to look like a year from now when we look back at this pandemic and how we have changed the way we do things and what the new normal becomes, right? Because I think it's like right. um, every, every, I mean, which is how I started by saying that I feel like there is no such a, thing, such a thing as new normal because like every day I feel like I pivot and I adjust into like some other version of what I want to do or I want to be. And then for that day, that becomes my new normal. And I think like when you, we go through such a huge change, like being a pandemic, like, you know, I feel like in Virginia, we have been, uh, we have been indoors for the last seven weeks and we have a state closure order for another four weeks. So that is a significant amount of time for like, you know, to just be at home and be trying to figure out how to do things differently in a new normal. So right. uh, I know that my life will change significantly uh, because I never, uh, I didn't spend nearly as much time online with my business or with my friends or connecting with people. And now I feel like, well, you know, why not? Right. It's, it is, it is something, you know, I'm trying to, um, to, to think, um, like another connection point, um, you know, around normal, is it more about um, our judgments or mm -hmm. how yes. we think other mm -hmm. people are, are living? You know, it's like, you know how they say, like, well, they said I have to do this or mm -hmm. they, you know, it's that they, you know, that, you know, perceived yeah. um, um, way of, of being. And so, um, the one thing that I have noticed, you know, in this by watching some news and, and sometimes my Facebook feed is that there's a lot, even though we're all in this together, you know, and I kind of go back and forth ab about how I feel about that, that term. There's a lot, a lot of us are dealing with this differently. Mm -hmm. It occurs to us differently. And you can see it state by state, individual by individual mm -hmm. and how we 
um, respond to how people are responding or how this is occurring to it is also interesting. I mean, there is, you know, you know there is um, a lot of questioning or there's a, you know, people are suspect, you know, if either, you know, or you're sick or, you know, you know, how, like you were talking about when you, you um, go to, you know, the store, you know, someone, you, you feel a certain way with someone with a mask, but how do you feel about somebody without a mask? <laughs> it's uh -huh. like, you know, it's yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, what's good, you know, you know, what's, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you know what's going, going yeah. on here? And You're like, old, oh, wear a mask. <laughs> right. And, and so it is how we normal is about our judgments about how everyone else is, um, is are living or how the, the world occurs and my relationship to it. And if I, if I feel like I am with it going in the stream, you know, you know, going down and every, you know, everything's fine. Maybe I'm a little different. That's okay. I'm kind of normal. It's all the kind of stuff. But if I'm going against it, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. then there's a judgment against myself. Yeah. I am, you know, I'm in questioning and things. And so really, how do you um, kind of, you know, and, and, you know, in my language, be you and, and do you, um, but with um, a wink or an acknowledgement of what everybody else is doing mm. and stay, you know, and stay yeah. connected with that. Yeah, that is, um, you know, that is like the forever proverbial keeping up with the Jonases, right? <laughs> it's like, it's right. like at this time, it's like, we're all comparing, like how much toilet paper do you have? Or like, you know, are you wearing a mask when you're going outside? Or are you, or are you going outside? Um, I just had an interaction with one of my organizing colleagues um, because she felt like it was wrong that I was going out to help people. And I, uh, and I just felt like I had to, you know, um, I think every individual has to make a decision for themselves. Like this particular client had a deadline and she was moving and she needed help. And it's like, she, like, this is, this is, this is an essential thing for her to get organized. So, so she can pack her home and move. Right. She, she gets right. to make that decision for herself about who she wants in her home and what is she, you know, what, what happens to her life and, how she's protecting herself. And I think right now it's really hard because we do have the self judgment. And I, and I did yesterday when I went to the grocery store, there was an, there was an older gentleman. He was, I mean, he was old. He was definitely in the risk category old. And in my head, I was like, I was like, don't you know what's happening in the world? Like, why aren't you wearing a mask? You know? And it wasn't like he wasn't the only one. There was a there was a mom with a very young youngish child, and none of them they were just totally oblivious, just shopping like you know like it was no big deal. And, and mind you that like you know I went to the store like on a Saturday, it would just be packed with people, and right. like the volume of people there was like for you know a Tuesday six a.m. volume uh, instead of a right. Saturday wow. night volume, which it would just be so many more people there. So. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I think I am, I am judging myself against what others are doing because I did feel, I did feel like that judgment from my colleague on whether I should be working with clients or not. And I also had to make a decision for myself about like, okay, how do I navigate what's happening right now in context to my own life and how do I protect myself? And I find those things really hard. You know, uh, I have spent a lot of time in therapy over the last couple of years. So, so this was right. like, this is like a long <laughs> journey to get here to right. just be like, okay, I'm okay with who I am. I'm okay with, you know, with the decisions I have to make for myself. I'm also, right. I'm also a person that's become okay with change. You know, like my immediate reaction is just be like, no, I don't change right which kind of right, goes right. with like which kind of goes with like my love of the normal like i like normal mm. and orderly and predictable and routine and things that right. make sense to my brain like 
I live in that world really, really right. well. <laughs> and right. then when you throw in a pandemic, my body's like, no, we can't do this. Right. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's all calm down and let's just be okay with the fact that we can adjust and it's going to be okay. And, and I, I can develop a new normal. And what does that look like? I'm still trying to figure out what that looks like, but. Um, right. I it's and and I think that's um, about our our journey. You, yeah. you know our you know our our life journey. We any time that we have this understanding or thought that we have arrived, mm. you, you know, there's more. You know, there's 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 more to go. There's more spaces to see. There's more yeah. things. And the and the fact that we're, you would even um, consider or ask the question, what's what's normal, what, mm -hmm. what's acceptable, what do I tolerate in my life? What do, mm -hmm. um, how do I want to show up? Just asking yourself those questions will allow you to kind of create the life that you want. And I, and I, and I think there was a conversation that I had, you know, our, our first week of doing this, of, you know, about that we have been taken off of autopilot, mm -hmm. you know, yes. um, and, and, and it's, and it's like, sometimes I'll, I'll bring my wife into this. Um, when my, 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 what, when we drive long distances, you know, sometimes um, when she's driving and, and I'm working in a car or something like that, but typically I do most of the driving, she will put on cruise control and just kind of like go. Uh -huh. And, and, I, and she would always say to me, you know, why do you never put on cruise control? Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like I, you're just, you're just working too hard to kind of, I'm like, it, for me, it's like, I'm driving. I want to stay engaged with, yeah. you know, with this. I yeah. don't want just the car to just kind of go. And I yeah. just kind of, you know, that's how it occurs to me. Yeah. And my life um, for a long time felt like cruise control, that it was just mm -hmm. going. And I yeah. really made little or to no decisions around my life. And when I, you know, because of trauma, because of, you know, things that, that came up in my life that I had to, to deal with, um, the cruise control was taken off and it's like, okay, what are we going to do? And it's like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, yeah. you know, you know, and it's just like, you know, taking a step or taking, you know, you know, taking a move and doing an action and, and all that. And it was very, at the beginning beginning very difficult to even acknowledge that I I could make decisions in my life mm -hmm. or that I needed to make decisions and choices and I and I think when we're, we're talking about normal or just kind of you know embracing what next or what consistent action that we're going to, to have to take that is something that we are going to have to um, make for ourselves mm -hmm. and really kind of acknowledge, okay, this is what's going on in the large. What am I going to do within that? Yeah. And, and it's like the more that we are okay with that mm -hmm. or come to terms with that, you know, because I, I am one of those people, I will plan, you know, spontaneity, you know, it's like, okay, at three o'clock, be spontaneous, <laughs> right? You know? <laughs> you know, you're one of my you know? people. <laughs> you know, and it's like, or it's not gonna happen, <laughs> right? You, right? you got to schedule <laughs> everything, <laughs> right? And, and so it is like yeah. for me, that's that's normal. Anything else, it's like this is not on the program. This is, you know, it's yeah. like, um, and and it's and it's just recognizing that there it. Um, there are a lot of things that are not going um, to happen um, that has happened before. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's like the, the, the days of the weeks sometimes, and unless someone kind of acknowledges, or I look at my calendar, I don't know what day it is. You yeah. know? <laughs> and it's like, and it's, and it's like, um, I, I think there was, there was somewhere I, maybe I was on the GLP call or, or something kind of catch up and, and they said, you know, the days of the week are gone. There's only mm -hmm. yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Right? Wow. You know? Yeah. And that's and, and, and that's it. And just kind of show up on yeah. today. You know, yeah. this is what happened yesterday. And we hope that we have <laughs> tomorrow yeah. and just kind of go from there. And and it's like 
is that okay to stay in today and not knowing and just do what you do and just accept that and now that is what normal is yeah um uh, that's such a great such a great insight into um into it and i love that and and i and i tend to agree with what you're saying about you know when one scheduling spontaneity because i forget um and if it's not on my calendar it's not reliable but right. we have we have we have this opportunity where like i was paging through my calendar the other day and i was like there is nothing there <laughs> There is absolutely nothing there, right? And I was like, I filled it with a whole bunch of Zoom calls and a few coaching clients and a, you know, a few, like one, I've been working with one client consistently over the last couple of weeks. Um, but it's like, like my calendar at times looks like there's nothing there. And, and I think like, this is a great time to reassess all of the things that we used to put in our calendar, right? It's like, and if you, you know, let's just, you know, William and I would say that, like, if you don't have any spontaneity in your life, then schedule an appointment, right? Because it works. <laughs> right. And it's it like, works. we schedule all kinds of other things in our appointment. Why not, like, spontaneity and sex and, like, I don't know, calling your mom? Like, uh, all right. of these things can, can have a space for a new calendar now. Uh, and then eliminating all of the things that you used to do in the past that just, like, don't come back. Um, what I was thinking the other day was that like, this is going to be, um, um, I have a group of girlfriends and I said to them as like, like, what do you do when you get out of jail? Like, what is the thing that you're going to do when we're actually allowed to do things and be out? Like, what is the first thing you're looking forward to doing? And like, we just went around talking about all the different things that we missed that we wanted to do. And it's like, you know, and also to think that the conversation really started because uh, because you know as they put things back on the calendar, uh, I had tickets to a concert to a couple of concerts and they rescheduled them. And then as I started looking at the way they rescheduled them, I was like, oh, this is going to be such a bummer because there are going to be so many things happening at the same time. And you can't right. be at all the baseball game and all the football game and all the, you know, the hockey game and all of the basketball right. game and all the concerts and all of the four months worth of stuff that we have missed. And like the graduations, right. they're they're like, yeah, the calendar is going to be so jam packed with things that we used to do, plus all the right. things we missed, plus all the things in the future. And we're going to have to make really deliberate uh, decisions about how we're going to spend our time because we went from like fast pace to no pace and we're going to go into double time pace right, right. and i wow. think if we're not careful we're going to be way worse off here than we were in the past because now we're going to try not right. to miss anything out so the conversation was around like how do you are very deliberate about what you're putting back in your calendar and how you're right. spending your time so you're living uh, you're living kind of like you are right now, still connected with people, still coming home and having dinner with your family, uh, still not workaholing or, you know, connecting with all of your friends, calling your mom, whatever it is that we're doing right now that just may feel like really so filling, but we're not like stretched so thin trying to fit what, what was in the past and what was in the future that we're just not enjoying any part of it. So it was a really great discussion. And it made me think, it made me think a lot about, about a lot of things that I normally jam pack into my calendar. And I'm like, you know what? Those things were okay, but did I really enjoy them half of the time? Or did I begrudge the fact that I had to do them? And if, if I begrudge doing anything, it's never coming back into my calendar, calendar again. I'm just going to eliminate those things altogether. Well, it's uh, and I can I can see that the, the the fear that came over me that it's like oh my god everybody's going to have FOMO and we're going to mm -hmm. you know try to you know do we are going to have FOMO yeah yeah and it's it's I th I think for for me um, the the other thing that that came up is even the the normalcy of my life or the things that I accepted in my life that I didn't like or that I questioned. And now that it's been 
you know, taken away or reduced to, you know, to a, a level. And it's not like that I would put them back in, mm -hmm. but it's like now I get to say just how much of my time is my time mm -hmm. and, and, and not, and that will be the, that will be normal <laughs> to me instead of, you know, saying I am so busy with other people's time. Right. Yeah. You know, do and you I think, wish I had time. Do you do think so. that people, um, do you think people are going to be really diligent about saying what you were just saying? Like, this is my time. Like, are you going to be more diligent about like protecting your time like you are right now into the future? I I think there is going to be, um, I think both. There's going to be a stage. It's like, it's, it's like when we're free from jail, right? <laughs> when we're free. To <laughs> when we get out of jail. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You know, people are just going to just try to do everything and just go and just mm -hmm. kind of wear themselves out. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there's going to be a reality check. It's like, all right. I don't yeah. need to be doing all this Not you know? well, yeah. um, and, and just kind of, and then it lands totally different than it did before. Mm -hmm. Then there, there is not this, um, um, I have to, and I, mm -hmm. you know, or I should do, do this. Yeah. It is really embracing what we want, you know, what we, what our desires, I, I believe, um, and, you know, I just looking at, at myself, that it it was hard to to say that I needed to have conversations like this on the daily. Mm -hmm. You know, I tried to have you know unsuccessfully have you, you know these conversations with my wife, and she's like, "Sweetheart, I you know every day, you know I just like I love you, but stop talking, right? <laughs> you know, you know, go find um, yourself some new friends." Right, you know, and it's like, it's like, okay, you know, okay, okay, I get it. And just recognize that mm -hmm. with, the more that I have conversations like this, the more that I am, you know, fully present in my coaching, mm -hmm. I'm fully present in yeah. the, the things that I care about and, and just admitting that to myself and, and not accepting less, mm -hmm. you know, not accepting what I felt that, okay, I should be doing this. I mean, you know, like you were saying, being responsible, I need to be responsible and not, you know, and not just have these, you know, theoretical conversations about normal, right? You know, it's uh, like, no there's a lot of stuff to do, right? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stuff to do, you know, yeah. you, know you know, that type, you know, that type of thing. And, and, and just really say, I'm okay with living my desires. I'm okay with saying this is what I need yeah. to be happy uh, and everything. And I think a lot of people, that is my, I guess that's my prayer that a lot of people will come out of this, you know, being connected to what they want and what they don't want in their life mm. and not just being um, should um, to, to death into, into a life that is, is not working for them. Yeah, and I think that um, I think that I agree with you. I, I hope my hope for people after this is that um, my hope for myself is that like after you know after spending so I have I have owned Organizing Maniacs for almost thirteen years, and and I was a workaholic, and I I just I put you know. Um, it cost me, you know, my friendships and it cost me my marriage and it cost me so much. And a couple of years ago I got divorced and it was like the first time I was like, oh, maybe it's like, you know, I'm in my mid forties. It's time to like reassess life in a different way. And that was like my first pause in the last couple of years. And then like, you know, then I started looking at things differently and making changes to my life. And then this feels like another significant pause. And then my hope for myself is that as I come out of this pandemic into like the other end, that I'm even more, that I'm even more present for the things that I do with my time and how I spend time with people and how I work and how, you know, um, how I give uh, and that, and that, and that, that new normal for me just right. kind of even ref, you know, finesses itself into something even better, even more so right. filling 
even more, you know, exciting and fun and responsible and spontaneous and, right. you know, and, uh, and so many other words that are not coming to mind right now, but I think life can right. be, life can be so robust and there is so much that we can do with our lives. And, and I think sometimes that like when we're spinning around and around, just running ourselves around town ragged, not really uh, loving ourselves or the people around us or our children or, you know, or our customers or whatever it is that we're su supposed to be doing, right? That we're also in that process, not loving ourselves. So my hope for myself is that like at the end of this pandemic, I find even more self-compassion, even more self-love, mm. even more self-understanding of what the things that are important to me, how do I want to spend my time, how do I want to live my life, how do I want to you know, treat the planet and the people around me in a way that really honors at the core the person that I really strive to be. Great. And that's a, that's a normal that... Um... <laughs> Yeah, that you can kind of be in, right? Yeah, you know, that's that's. Um, it's wow, not. It's is, not a canned fun. It's yeah. It was. It was fun. Thank you. It's not a canned. You know. I think like. Uh, so I think I think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end the same way I started. Right. I think like the whole idea of normal. Uh, it's it's an illusion. Right. Yeah, it's, it's an illusion. Yeah, and and. It, and but it's an illusion that we can uh, we can buy into or reject. You know, we yeah. can you know we we can have a say yeah. in how that illusion occurs to us. Absolutely. Um, and um, and and the people involved. Um, you know, I have your your website um, up. Um, do you have anything um, exciting coming up or? Or uh, things that you want people to uh, come to work you with? Yeah, I so during uh, I came home from uh, I went to a conference in Houston in Houston the first couple of weeks in March, and I came home and literally the day I came home from um, my conference, like the whole you know the whole state of Virginia went on shutdown mode. They closed down the schools, and on that on that week the the next week that followed felt really depressed. Right, I was like right. I was like. Um, I was mourning the life I had two weeks ago. And then on the second week, I was like, you know what? I can develop a new normal, speaking of. And so I said, why don't I, you know, I have a ton of training in my vault that I like, you know, that I develop for conferences and for all kinds of things. So it's like, why don't I do like some free training Fridays? So in the month of April, I ran four free training Fridays. And if people are interested in uh, seeing some of the things that I did, you can just go to organizingmaniacs.com. We have a DIY uh, tab. You can just click there. And the first thing that comes up is like four trainings that I did in the, um, in the month of April during the pandemic that people can take for free. And one of them was managing paper, uh, managing your paperwork, where I talk about record retention guidelines, which I think is the reason why people uh, have too much paper. I talked about um, I talked about um, managing your memorabilia, which is like people are like, is that clutter? Do I sh should I keep that? We never really know what to do with that. Uh, I did one on uh, staying focused with uh, technology tools with my friend Deb Lee. And then I did one on managing your finances and budgets during a pandemic uh, with my right. friend Shauna Bell. So if people are interested in more free training, I have some stuff available on our website. Oh, no, that's that's great. I, I, I think the um, um, I think I was on the, the, the tech one. That was you are. Yeah, yeah, that was very bad. That was, that, Thanks that was for coming. Good. Yeah. But I you know, I, I appreciate the. Um, um, you know, we're at home more and we see more, you know, I, yeah. I, um, I, um, um, did, um, a, a workshop, you know, at, at camp, um, GLP, a number of, I think the last year, you know, the art of noticing, mm. um, and, um, I remember you know, that. And, and the more that we're at, you know, our house, we notice more stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think, um, the, your offerings and the things that you're doing now we can notice now we have mm -hmm. what we can do with that stuff that we're noticing right you know yeah. we never had time to <laughs> time to look at or anything like that now yeah. we can decide yeah. hey 
that's, uh, you know, I haven't yeah. seen that in a number of years. Right. Like, you know, well, do I really on. need that around? Water <laughs> doesn't have to be your normal anymore. You can you right. get rid of that stuff. <laughs> no, that's great. So, well, um, I would love for you to stay in the um, uh, green room while I close out the, uh, the show. Um, thank, thank you so you much, very much for having this me. I really great. appreciate it. This is a good conversation about normal. Right. Thank you. Oh, this is uh, this has been great. Um, I hope within that conversation that you um, you see how normal is occurring to you. Um, I, I think for for me, it's it has been more of a judgment um, of you know reality or what people what I'm doing, and the more that I will. Um, I guess take ownership of how I want to live my life or how I see my life or what's going on in my life, the, um, the more normal my life will, will be and I will accept that. And so uh, um, instead of fearing or uh, longing for something that is no longer um, your, your reality, um, let's embrace um, what we're present to, what's happening today. And I think that's one reason why I say happy today, because I'm making a decision to be happy today. No matter what happens or doesn't happen, I am happy. And so that is my prayer for you. The world wants you, the world needs you, and the world has been waiting for you. So go be you. See you tomorrow.